Hey, shalom brothers, shalom sisters, Bishop Nathaniel here. That's right, you know what day it is. It's Shout Out Tuesday. It is Shout Out Tuesday. And I pray you brothers and sisters join me every Tuesday afternoon on IUIC Events channel, where I will be reading your kind and inspirational letters, also thanking you for your kind donations, and also covering very important biblical information for the mental well-being of our 12 tribes. That's right, 12 tribes worldwide. So hope to see you then every Tuesday afternoon on IUIC events. Shalom. They screaming peace when there ain't no peace Israel pop a sign in the streets Look at me, the center of attention Black Messiah coming with a vengeance Coming with a vengeance Black Messiah coming with a vengeance They screaming peace, it ain't no peace We pop a sign in the streets We seeking peace in the streets of Babylon Brandison, Glock 40, tucking heat like a carry on Sending the gifts of fathers, got us sleeping, not napping on Christ the King revealed this aerial phenomenon Kicking against the bricks, lose your soul when that fire comes We purified, better than gold, got my Bible on And that's all that I know, where Babylon Gon' fall, watch it blow, ayy Switching it up, the nation's gon' drink it I'm talking the cup, don't care what you think thinking Believe in the gospel, the God is stinking The fires of heaven gon' gather for dinner The eat of the flesh, the wicked, the sinner Your mama, your sister, your daddy, your cousin If they is, if they mind, they don't repent they Hey, how long y'all been together? It's your girl, right? How long y'all been together? Four years? Since you married? Since in a high shirt, you married? You not married? You got a boyfriend? You do? How long y'all been together? Three weeks? Hmm. But y'all been together four years. All right, so why you ain't married her? I can't hear you. You waiting on a good time? Y'all got kids? How many? Got two kids, boys, girls? A boy and a girl. So y'all got two kids together. Y'all been in a relationship four years. What's the hold up? You know what I want? Watch this. The book of Psalms, the 119 verse 59. I thought on my ways and turned my feet until I until that testimony. The Bible said I thought on my ways and turned my feet to that testimony. Because I was you, bro. I was with my wife eight years before we got married. You know what I'm saying? Um, but we was in high school. So, you know, it was kind of early, right? But we still continue to have sex, continue to have babies, right? Well, one baby, right? But was that right, though? It wasn't right. We was, we was having sex and having children, but we weren't married. You want to be married? You do? You the one that's holding back. You want to be married? Then why don't you do it? You was mature enough to put babies in them. Right. You feel me? This is the issue in the black community. And guess what? You ain't the only one, bro. I was you. I was 19 when I had my first baby. Me and my wife had a baby. She was 21. I was 19. I was in college. And it was hard. It was real hard because we was young. You feel me? Then when I turned 22 and she was 24, we got married. Two years later, three years later. Right? But it was still hard. But ain't it better if y'all married and got the blessings of the Lord? Right. Like, it's going to be hard, but you can make it because you got the most high behind you because you're doing right by him. Because God got commandments, right? Get the Hebrews 13. So King David, you know King David committed adultery, right? And he had them. You listening to me, bro? You listening to me, bro? King David committed adultery and had the brother whose wife, whose wife that was killed. So when he writing to us, he said, I thought on my ways. I thought about the evil I was doing and turned my feet to God's testimonies, Right? When you find out you're doing something wrong in the eyes of God, you're supposed to turn towards God and start doing what he say you're doing wrong. Watch this, read. 
The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all. What the Bible say? So out of all the things God honors, what's the first thing he honors is? Marriage. Right. What was the first commandment? What was the first commandment God gave? Or what was the first thing he instituted? What was the first union he instituted? What was it? He took Adam, opened up his side, took a black woman out, took his rib out and made a black woman. Because you know those black people, right? Adam and Eve were black, look like you, dark skin. You understand that sense? Same with you. So if y'all together, y'all got children together, y'all in a relationship, y'all love each other, right? Then what's the hold up, bro? Being young, nah, our forefathers used to get married when they was like 20. You know what I'm saying? And they weren't that much better off than us. Right. The Bible telling you to do the right thing. It say marriage is honorable and all, read. And the bed undefiled. What that mean? The bed undefiled. What that mean, sis? Marriage is honorable and the bed undefiled. What you think that mean? What y'all think that mean? What do you mean the bed undefiled? You ain't fornicating because you're married. So the bed undefiled. Because when you laying together, having babies together, but you don't choose to get the paperwork, the proper paperwork, get married, your bed defile. You know how your bed defile? I'm going to tell you how. Because in six months, both of y'all can just say, you know what, I'm sick of this, I'm tired of you, I'm tired of you, let's just separate. And y'all go y'all separate ways. And you get another woman, and she get another man. So the bed's defile. You feel me? It's, the, it's breaking up the black uh, infrastructure. It's breaking up the black family. God wants the black family unified, y'all. That's why he said, Marriage is honorable all and, and the bed undefiled. Go ahead. But whoremongers. What's a whoremonger? Who know what a whoremonger, huh? No, no, no. Oh, say again. Sleeping outside of marriage. Sleeping outside of marriage, but not just one person. Multiple. He's a whoremonger. I mean, he go to the club and stay till the lights come on. Because he looking for that scraggler at the end that's drunk with her homegirls and she really to get it in. That's a whoremonger. You know, God, and the, the women do the same thing. They call them whores. A man is called a whoremonger, meaning he's a man whore. You heard that before, right? He a man whore. That's what the Bible's saying. Whoremongers, read. And adulterers. Adulterers, read. God will judge. Now, how does God judge whoremongers and adulterers? How does God judge them? Because there's some real life stuff right here. Because what we're saying to you, you may think that, oh, they just reading out the Bible. They're just some type of religious group. No. Jackson, Mississippi, number four in HIV. So be happy that y'all together. Because if y'all just were to so-called choose to go get with somebody else in this in Jackson, you opening her up and you opening him up to HIV. Because every other person, every two or three people in Jackson, somebody got it. And you don't know who the people that, that like, this, like you said, you had a boyfriend for three weeks. You don't know who he slept with before you. You feel me? So he could have slept with three women. But those three women could have had three partners. Now it's 12 people in the loop, if my math is correct. That's 12 different people that have been in a sexual uh, triangle or something. Hell, I don't know. Right? So that's what we're trying to tell you. That's why HIV run rampant and, and, AIDS, and AIDS run rampant in Jackson. Because right. God said, whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Now watch what God, how God going to judge them. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 61. Also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, so, you can't read the word HIV in the Bible, or AIDS, or gonorrhea, or chlamydia, or syphilis. You don't read those words in the Bible. Those are new terms in the last century or so, right? So the Bible telling us right here, God, everything that ain't even written in the book yet, God said whatever the new disease is on the earth, like the blue waffle, you heard of that? You heard the blue waffle? You heard the blue waffle? You heard the blue waffle? You know what it looked like? You ain't seen that picture. Because if you did, your whole face would have changed when I said it. It's horrible. It's like a it's, it's like a blue waffle. It's the vagina. When a woman having sex with men unprotected over and over and over and over, they get a bacterial disease or infection called the blue waffle. And it's disgusting. And it stinks. And ain't no man gonna wanna sleep with a woman like that no more. That's what our sisters open themselves up for, cause your body for one man. Like this your man right here? That's what your body for. Once you marry her, bro. Right. You feel me? You marry her. And even now, even though, because technically, in the eyes of God, she's supposed to be your wife because y'all having sex. That's why the Lord said, these sicknesses that's not written in the book, he going to get our people. Go ahead. Them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. Now, you may say, well, I can't die from gonorrhea. I can't die from herpes. 
but you can't die from HIV. You see the blue waffle? I don't even want to see it. Don't even show it to me. I might pass out up here. Give me Exodus 22, 16. So it's real. God's solution for us is real. This is how we going to, you know, you understand by y'all getting married, you're setting the example for your son and your daughter. Who then now, when they grow up, they're going to say, all I know is my mom and daddy being married. So what's she going, what's your daughter going to look for? When she get older, she going to look for a boyfriend? Is she going to look for a husband? She going to say, no, I want somebody like my daddy who married my mama. You feel me? Because we don't realize the things that we're doing while our kids young, they see it. It's programmed to their mind, and they do it when they get older. They make the same mistakes we made because we're teaching them by our actions. So now God says this, read. The book of Exodus, chapter 22, verse 16. And if a man entice a man, the brother that you've been with for three weeks, and then y'all, because y'all met somewhere. Y'all went to high school together? You from Jackson? You from Jackson too? So y'all just knew each other growing up, right? Or when y'all grew up, right? So he enticed you. Just like the brother, you said you've been with a brother for three weeks. So entice me, I'm going to make it in today's turn. Entice means spit game. The brother spit game to you. He, he got you. You know, you caught the looks. He talked, he got a good mouthpiece. He probably was a good person, you thought. So you said, okay, I'm going to give him my number, right? Same with you. You gave the number or the DM, text message, whatever, right? So now it says if a man entice a maid, meaning if he spit in game to a maid, right? Go ahead. That is not betrothed. And she not promised to be married to someone else. And lie with her. And then after he spit game to her, get a number, they start talking. They go on a couple of dates or whatever. Then he has sex with that sister. Read. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. You hear that, sis? You having sex with that brother that you've been with three weeks? So y'all just started talking. Y'all ain't never did it before. Good. That's good. So the Bible say, if y'all do have sex, he's supposed to do what? I can't hear you. Okay. 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 What about you? Because y'all got two kids. Y'all been having sex. According to the Bible, what you supposed to do? You supposed to marry that sister. Right. To cut down disease. And so the Most High would do what? Bless you. Right, right. Bless your union. Because, you know, we all, we, some of us get a lick. We hit a lick. You know what I'm saying? We get some money, come into some money. And we're like, we thank God, right? We're like, man, the Lord blessing me. I'm straight right now. You feel me? I can go chill. I can take my wife out. You know what I'm saying? We can go eat, take the kids out. We getting it in. I can get a new car finally. I've been needing a car. So we count those all blessings, right? Give me uh, Revelation 22 and 14. Let me show you what is truly a blessing, bro. Because if you want the most high to be behind your marriage, you understand, to bless y'all, to be able to have the things that y'all need, provide for y'all, where you ain't got to hit no lick, where you ain't got to go through no back door, nothing illegal, this is what you do. This is how you get it. Read. The book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 14. Bless are they that do his commandments. How you blessed? Based on what we just read. How you blessed? Yeah, because that, that's a commandment. Right? Read it again. Bless are they that do his commandments. How you get blessed? You listening to the scripture? Because the Bible telling you. Read it again. Blessed are they that do his commandments. How you get blessed? You got to do God's commandments. One of God's commandments is marriage. What about dress code? Does, it, does the Bible have a dress code for women? How God said woman supposed to dress? Supposed to cover up, right? Hey, this your girl. So, you okay with other people looking at your girl's shape? You not? Why you let her dress in pants? Because you know, because that's, because my wife, like for instance, when I was in the world, before I knew this knowledge, I'd be at the gym, playing, warming up, and I'd see my wife walk in with some little bitty shorts on and some high heels. And all the dudes in the crowd going like this. And never in my mind did I think at that time when I wasn't in my right mind, that ain't right. That's my wife. Why all these men turn their head, breaking their neck, looking at mine? That's me. Right. I'm the only one supposed to know what that thing shape like, sit like, <laughs> feel like, smell everything. That's me. Right or wrong, bro? That's me. So now, give me First Timothy 2 and 9. So now that you want that to be you and you only, she got to cover up. She can't dress a certain way. Because you said it. Because you're you going to do the right thing and marry her. Because a lot of women don't listen to boyfriends. I'm going to be real. Women don't listen to boyfriends because you ain't married me. You ain't did right by me. Right? Come on. The book of 1 Timothy, to the 2, verse 9. In like manner also that the woman adorn themselves in modest apparel. God said a woman's supposed to adorn herself in modest apparel. As a husband, you're supposed to say, hey, baby, nah. Let's hit the stove. Throw your pants away because that's against God. Let's go buy you dresses. 
Throw your tights away. Well, you can wear tights under, under your dress, obviously, because it get cold out, right? You can wear tights under your dress. But if your wife step out in some pants or some Daisy Dukes, you're supposed to say, oh, <laughs> where you think you're going? If my, if my wife dead to walk out the house in some booty store, so I'm going to say, hey, what the hell? This you playing, right? You got to be playing. You might be finna go to the bedroom. Ain't no way you finna leave the house and wear dress like that. If you don't cover your ass up, because that's what a man do. A man look out for his wife. A man gonna make sure his wife keep the commandments. That's right. Cause that's how you get what? That's how you get blessed. Right. Blessed are they that do the commandments. God says she gotta dress modest. Sis, you gonna dress modest if he tell you to? So he tell you put on a dress, you gonna do. Okay. You hear this? You hear this, don't you? So she already trying to say, look, I'm gonna submit to this brother. You gotta marry her, bro. Right. You know how many women out here bucking? You know what I mean by bucking, right? You tell them, black man, tell them something, they say, nigga, I ain't got to listen to you. Right. <laughs> the white man gave me power. I got to listen to your ass. You a nigga. Right. That's what a lot of black women look, I'm, to be honest, sister, you hear black women talk. You hear how they talk in the beauty salon. You hear how our sisters talk in the nail shop. All they do is talk about how, girl, he bought me this and he did this. I made him do that. He do what I say. Girl, if I call him right now, he going to pull up. Right or wrong? That ain't a man according to God. You understand? Men, men according to God, don't follow the woman. The woman follow who? The man of God. So if you're going to be a man of God, your wife going to follow because you right. When you roll in the spirit, she going to roll in the spirit. Right? Now watch this. Sirach 26 and 23. What's going on, bro? Jump jump in the conversation that thing. How you doing, bro? I'm listening. You listen. All right, good. So we going over marriage. Right? We going over marriage. This couple right here, they've been together four years. They got kids. He said he going to do the right thing in marriage. She said she going to submit to her husband. Sister right here, she's been in a relationship for a little while. We're trying to get, we're we going we, we gonna to help you. It's still kind of early. Three weeks? Uh -huh. Don't put it on me. You understand? I wanna, I wanna you. Nah, bro, we just teaching, bro. If I pull you into the conversation, just listen. Sirach 26, 23. The book of Sirach, chapter 26, verse 23. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. You hear the Bible say, sis? You hear the Bible say? I want you to really take, um, take, pay full attention to what God's saying. God said a wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. What you think that mean? Because brothers, we complain about how sisters do, right? How sisters, they put us on child support or they, 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 they act ratchet towards us. They disrespect us, cheat on us. But it's because we wicked, huh? We What's all, that? We all wicked people one time before. Say it again? We all wicked people. Yeah, definitely don't put your hand on your wife. You're right. We don't beat women. Hell no. If anybody in our church beating their wife, they got to get up out of here. Right. And sis need to call the police because we don't condone that. We don't condone beating our wives. But we do condone our wives submitting to us according to the Bible. Submission ain't slavery. So the Bible says a wicked woman is given as a porch to a wicked man. So if you're going to the club to find this brother, that's a wicked man. You understand what I'm saying? If he holler at you at the store and he ain't saying nothing about getting, getting to know you, respecting you, Want to know if you can't see him wearing the fringes? You understand? He ain't got his beard rocking. He don't know who he is. And if he don't know who he is, he can't lead you. Because a wicked woman given to as a portion to a wicked man. So if you always getting the wicked brother that leave you, that disrespect you, that cheat on you, guess what you are? Read it again. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. Ain't no such thing as opposites attract with God. God said you attract what you put out. If you wicked, you're going to get a wicked man. Right. If you wicked, you're going to get a wicked woman. That's what God's saying. Go ahead, yeah. So, but, 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 okay, okay, okay once, you, once you try to turn yourself, okay, before you find yourself, who you are, so what, what, what you do then? Right, when you say church, you mean on Sunday? Okay, yeah, no, nah, that's the wrong church. That's this right here. That's white Jesus. Because Sunday worship is was instituted by who? Constantine, right? Constantine was a black man, by the way. The Holy Roman Empire. But after that, the Spanish conquistadors, Pope Nicholas V, Pope Alexander VI, all these popes, they start instituting Sunday as being the official day of worship to replace Saturday, which is the Sabbath day. Like I know the brothers already went over, y'all. Today is the Sabbath. Today we're not supposed to buy, sell, and cook, but yet the Arabs still got that, door open, that, that store open over there getting all your money. On the Lord's Sabbath day, which we ain't supposed to be buying nothing today. So all that, when you say going to find a woman at church, that don't mean she ain't wicked. Because she at the Christian church learning lies. You feel me? So that's why we say a wicked woman is given as a porch to a wicked man, read. 
by a godly woman. A godly woman. That go your name. That is right there. That's what you want to be. A godly woman, read. Is given to him that feareth the Lord. A godly woman gonna be given to the man that fear the Lord. When a man fear the Lord, the Lord bring a godly woman. Cause now he know what to look for. Same way with you. If you a godly woman, you know what to look for. You know not to look for the brother whose mind ain't right. Who breaking God's Sabbath. You call him on Saturday. Say, hey, what you doing today? Oh, I'm gonna go to the store and buy me a, 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 a rib sandwich. Rib sandwich? That's pork. We can't eat that, brother. It's the Sabbath day. You can't buy. You already know what his mindset like. Because that's how you know somebody fear the Lord. When you fear God, you keep his commandments. You know what I want? Uh, Ecclesiastes 12, 13. This is how you know somebody fear God or not. This is how you know she a godly woman or he a godly man. This is how you know. Watch this. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Because earlier we talked about marriage. A, a godly man going to marry his sister. You understand? When I say sister, I don't mean his. I don't mean no incest. I mean she an Israelite, you an Israelite. Y'all married within y'all race. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. So let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. This is the end all. This is what the whole Bible uh, boiled down to. Read. Fear God. What the Bible say? Fear God. You got to fear God. Because when we read earlier, God will give you STDs if you out here sleeping with every woman that you see. God will bring judgment on you. Or he'll give you a baby by a wicked woman who you don't want to deal with. Read. And keep his commandment. Fear God and do what? Wait a minute, that's the same thing we read earlier. That's how you blessed. You got to fear God and keep the commandments. Read. For this is the whole duty of man. That's your duty, bro. You was put on this earth to fear God and keep his commandments. Brother Nate, you was put on the earth to fear God and keep his commandments. That's what God put you on the earth for. God didn't put you on the earth to be evil. He put you on the earth to do what he say do. Why? Because we're going to inherit eternal life. We're going to live forever. Some of you may think that America, we were sent here to rest. We want to send Why are you leaving, Brother Nate? Don't leave, family. Two minutes, man. Bro, you need more than two minutes. I'm looking at you right now. You need way more than this. Yeah, yeah, I know you hear me. I need you to feel me. I need you to, to listen. Okay, you got to win now? You got to go what you need to be. Okay. Well, hey, ain't nothing more important than the Most High God. Ain't nothing more important than God, bro. Take that flyer, call us. Our number on the back, bro. And our address. Give him a flyer, bro. Y'all understand what we're saying? I know y'all probably got to leave soon. But you know what we're saying right because it's coming out the Bible. You got to marry that sister. Sis, you got to submit to your husband. He say wear clothes. He say wear a dress. Wear that dress. Sister, you. Yo, 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 your situation kind of. I, I'm, I'm, I'm unsure. You understand? Because you said just three weeks of a relationship. But I'm asking you, does that brother keep the Sabbath day? Saturday, does he not buy, sell, cook? Or you don't know? So you don't even know these things and you in a relationship with him? You said it's your boyfriend? Huh? He already got money, so he don't need to buy. Oh, he, he, he don't really got money like that. So he a young brother. How old? Y'all both 21. Okay. So what happens if y'all have sex and you get pregnant? Is he ready to be a father and a husband? And a provider? You know that for a fact in three weeks. Yeah, he say he is to get the draws. Because that's what we say. I'm just telling you, I know your pastor don't talk like this. It's because your pastor a liar. Men talk to women with the intent to have sex with her. That's what we just read in Exodus chapter 22. That's why Moses had to write a law. Because he know black men. He know what we do. We see a beautiful sister. And we ain't in a relationship. Or sometimes, even if we in a relationship. We try to holler at her. And if she give us the time of day. And she give us the number. Hey, man, nah, I'll leave my girl. Man, hell, my girl. Man, she ain't as fine as you, baby. Man, I don't even worry about that. Chill out, chill out, chill out. You tripping, you tripping, you tripping. You, you, no cap, no cap, no cap. You gassing, you gassing. That's how we talk, right? And so what? We get the draws. Then once we get the draws, what we do? Leave you. Put a baby in you. That's what black men do whose mind ain't on God. We trying to show you how to set yourself up for a godly man that's going to go contrary to that. Before he has sex with you, he going to get to know you. He going to prove you. He going to find out if you a righteous woman. And you going to find out if he a righteous man. But in three weeks, I'm telling you, if he mess around and get you pregnant, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm prophesying because I'm a prophet. Right. I'm prophesying to you. He ain't going to do right. Because you don't know him. You understand? Somebody might say, look at him now over there trying to break that girl up with her boyfriend. You damn right. Because right. you our sister. And we tired of our sister. Because what happened? Who get left with the baby, bro? Every time. Right. You had you more risk than him. He has sex with you and he move on. No responsibility, no ties, no nothing. You got to carry that baby for nine months. Right. 
You at that at home by yourself lonely with that child. Mama no. You done had children, it ain't easy, is it? <laughs> take it from your take it from your big sister. Right. Your big sister telling you, she saying, sis, it ain't easy. Tell her, sis, please tell her. Tell her it ain't easy. It ain't easy, sis. It's not easy to be in a relationship by yourself. Now, that brother might hear this message because you might bring this message to him and he might say, hey, I'm with that. Let's go learn from them brothers. Let's go teach. Let's go learn the Bible like what they teaching that. And he might get himself together. But if not, give me uh, Proverbs 2. I'm going to show you how the Bible, God is set up, God set up um, wisdom to protect you, right. to protect y'all. Everything we have gone over today is to protect you from HIV, from uh, early pregnancy, unwanted pregnancy. Because say... In three months, God forbid, but in three months you choose to stay with this brother, he do get you pregnant. And then six months into your pregnancy, he cheating, he putting his hands on you, he disrespectful, right? And you say, I don't want to be with him no more. And you, get, you have a hatred for him so much that you say, I don't want to bring his child into the world. I'm going to go to the abortion clinic. 19 million, I want you to listen to this number. Since 1973, 19 million black babies have been killed. Not in the streets of Jackson, inside their mother's womb. 19 million abortions. Now, why you think women are aborted? Now, some of them are rape. 1% of them are rape. We still don't condone it. If you rape and you get pregnant, have that baby and give it up for adoption if you don't want to have it. But do not kill. You understand what I'm saying? Go ahead, family. Uh, just like you just said a few minutes ago, how um, man can leave the woman by itself. More risk on the child. You're exactly right, cause he he got kids, so he know you can't stress out. <laughs> baby gonna hurt the baby. Baby gonna come out angry, mad, or, or deformed, or or hurt, or messed up in the head because of the tension. Right? Come on. Proverbs 2:10. The book of Proverbs, to the two verse ten. So please listen to our counsel, sis. Come to our church. Come and learn what you got to do to be a righteous sister, so you can get a righteous man. I don't want to see you out here seven, eight months pregnant. We said, damn, that's the sister we saw. That's our sister. We tired of that happening to y'all. We standing up for y'all, but a lot of y'all take it as, as, as hate. We don't hate you. We love the black woman, and we tired of y'all going through what y'all going through. It's time for you to be tired of it. Read. When wisdom enter into thine heart. When wisdom enter in your heart. Read. And knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. You got to love God's commandments, sister. You got to love to serve the Lord. Read. Discretion shall preserve thee. It says discretion shall preserve thee, meaning what? Good decision making. When you keep God's commandments, it teach you how to make good decisions. This teach you how to find righteous men. Right? Come on. Understanding shall keep thee Read. to deliver thee from the way of, an, of the evil man. What the Bible say wisdom going to do? To deliver thee from of the evil man. You hear this, sis? The Bible said to deliver you from the way of the evil man. It's evil men out here. Who put their hands on women, who rape women. You do realize during the pandemic last year in 2020 that almost 70,000 black women went missing. Why do you think that is? Who was doing it? We, we, it's suspicious. If a white man pulled up in this neighborhood in an all tinted out van, we look at him suspicious. Like, what the hell he doing in this side of town? So it had to be somebody that looked like her that she was familiar with. That she didn't suspect to grab her, throw her in the back of a van, lock her down and change and then sell her overseas. Human trafficking. Huh? A black man. It had to be somebody. So the Bible says deliver thee from what? D to deliver thee from the weight of the evil man. God has given you wisdom through this Bible and through your brothers who's up here teaching you right now to deliver you from the way of the evil man. Now let me ask you a question. In three weeks, had that brother been to your house? He hasn't. All right. But in a relationship, you plan to eventually bring somebody by your crib, your apartment, your house, wherever. You in college? Okay, so you're a youngster. What college you at? Heinz? Okay, which one? Utica? Okay, okay, so you in Jackson. So, that's what I'm saying. So, there gonna come a time where you're gonna become comfortable enough with him where you're gonna want him to come to the house, eat, chill, whatever, Netflix and chill, which you shouldn't be until you're married. But, watch this. The book of Sirach, chapter 11, verse 29. Bring not every man into thy house. The Bible said don't bring every man in your house. That go for you too. Because you got a little girl, a little boy. If you know your homeboy ain't right, he always talking about how beautiful your daughter is. He always want her to sit in his lap. Man, hell no, nah, nigga, you can't come to the house. I got three daughters, and if I see a spirit on any brother around me that he like to touch little girls, ain't no way he come to my crib. The Bible say don't let every man in your house. Read. 
But a deceitful man have many trains. Trains mean tricks. He got a lot of evil tricks that he like to pull. He deceitful. So God said, don't let every man in your house. That's what I'm trying to tell you, sis. If you was coming to our church, we would make sure that before a brother can talk to you, he got a job. Give me that real quick in Ciroc chapter 29. Let me show you what God said a man got to have before he can have a wife. And then, then we're going to correlate it with Genesis chapter 2 to show you it's the same thing that the Lord made sure Adam had before he gave him Eve. Ciroc 29, 21. Read. The book of Ciroc chapter 29, verse 21. The chief things for life is water and bread and clothing and in house to cover shame. It is. Now, how does a man provide water, bread, and clothing? He got to have what? He got to have a job. How does a man provide a house? He got to have a job. Even if it's just an apartment. We ain't saying you got to have a big mansion. But even if it's an apartment, he got to have somewhere for you to lay your head. Most sisters will lay and have sex with a dude, and they don't even know where he live and who he live with. Does that make any sense? You know the female rat? The female rat, an animal. Um, it's a mammal, right? A rodent, right? A rat. You know a rat, a female rat will not lay down and have sex with a male rat if it's got a disease or if it don't have its own place? Even nature teaches you how you're supposed to deal. Even nature is supposed to tell you how earth, the earth is supposed to revolve. The man got to have a house. Does this man you got a house? Oh, oh. What about a job? You got a job? Sis, don't do that. Don't get caught up in that. I'm telling you what's going to happen. He probably handsome. He look good to you, don't he? The man, give me a Ciroc 11. I'm going to help you, sis. You my sister. I'm going to help you. We're going to help you. But you got to let us help. You got to take heed to the Bible. Ciroc 11 and 2. The book of Ciroc, chapter 11 and verse 2. Commend not a man for his beauty. There's some handsome brothers out there. I know we the, we the greatest, bro. We the greatest people on earth, but we look good. Right. Some of us busted up, jacked up from the world. We done got cut, uh, you know, don't eat right. But if you take the black man in his perfect form, when he following God, when he wearing his beard, we look better than everybody. We know that, sis. But the Bible said, don't commend a man because of his beauty. Meaning what? Don't say, oh, he a good brother because he look good to you. You understand? Read. Neither abhor a man for his outward appearance. And don't hate a brother because he's not the most handsome. That's what God is saying. Because when you read the Bible, it said that Jesus Christ wasn't the best looking man. God did that on purpose. He didn't want people, he didn't want women lusting after him because of how he looked. Right. He wanted women to follow him and men to follow him because of the spirit that he had. Because he was a righteous brother, perfect brother. You understand what I'm saying? So now God is telling you, don't just because a brother look good to you or he's sexy to you. And you're going off your hormones. Don't just get with a brother and allow him in your house. Call him your boyfriend. And he ain't got no job. He ain't got a house to stay. Yeah, he trying to get one. Hey, good. The brother trying to better himself. We're not down to him. We looking out for you. If he was here, I'd get on his ass the same way. I'm like, bro, what you doing, bro? You can't be doing this. You can't be talking to this since you ain't got no, no job, no house, bro. Stop. Stop. Right. I tell him right now, quit. You understand? Because relationships come sex. Sex comes babies. I can't hear you. That's cool. That's cool. I know brothers like that. They got GI Bill from the military. They got, you know, uh, disability. So I ain't knocking that. If that's what he got, that's cool because, hey, that's how he get paid. But he got to have a house and he got to be godly. So he still got to check off all these categories before I still say, hey, sis, all right. And even then, you got to prepare yourself. You feel me? You got to prepare yourself. You want to, remember we read earlier, a wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man, but a godly woman is given to him that fear the Lord. You start dressing like God say dress. You start covering your head like the sister did when the Bible coming out, like, like the Bible say do. You start talking about how we the children of Israel. You'll see if that man really, that, that man really love God. Because the Bible say you're going to know them by their what? Matthew 7, 16. I'll show you. The book of Matthew chapter 7 and verse 16. You shall know them by their fruits. So you're going to know them by their fruits. Think about a tree. If, I, if somebody didn't tell you what kind of tree they was planting, they just put some seeds in the ground and they tell you, hey, wait, give it a little while when the tree grow. Then when the tree grow, you start seeing little fruit coming from the stems, from the branches. And you saw that's an apple tree. Bro, why you didn't tell me that was an apple tree? But how did you know it was an apple tree? By the fruit. Right. You understand? 
So you, whatever, if a, if you if a brother is a righteous brother, his fruit's going to be righteous. He going to keep the commandments. He going to teach you to keep God's commandments. I ain't talking about church on Sunday, hooping and hollering. No, 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 no. no I ain't talking about that crap. I'm talking about keeping God's commandments as Israelites. Like what we about to go do. When we leave here, we go to church. You should follow us. If y'all ain't got nothing to do, y'all should follow us. I know y'all got kids. Y'all might have to go get them and stuff. But when we, when we leave here, we're going straight to the church and we're going to teach class. And we're going to enjoy ourselves and enjoy the feast day. Today is a Sabbath day. Tomorrow is a Sabbath day as well. When the sun go down at night, it's the Feast of Pentecost. That's what you read about in the book of Acts, the second chapter. Remember they all met on the Feast of Pentecost? That's tonight. We're going to have a celebration tomorrow. You understand? So these are things that you got to know. And that's why we say follow us to the school so you can learn. So the Bible says you what? Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. We the trees is talking about. It's talking about us, man. We the trees. So he said, look, every good tree bring forth good fruit. Just like a good apple tree, when it grow up, you're going to see uh, fruit coming from it. Right. Apples coming from it. And the apples ain't going to be all jacked up. They're going to be good and ripe and juicy and good apples, right? Good fruit for you to consume. Same way with a man. If a man is a good tree, he's going to bring forth good fruit, right? Come on. But a corrupt tree. But a corrupt tree. Some wrong when we planted this tree, it wasn't completely rooted. It was corrupt. Read. Bring it forth evil fruit. And when that fruit come from the tree, when it finally do grow, you see it's rotted. It's different colors. It ain't right. That's how you gonna know. So you gotta give it time. Brothers gonna show if they truly right. If he try to have sex with you without getting married, he ain't right. Right. If he already talking about sex, what you got on? Come on, man. Show me something. It's just FaceTime. Damn, you gonna be my girl anyway. You my girl, right? We together, right? She laughing. Because I know brothers. We the prophets of God. We done been through some stuff. Right. <laughs> so we know. We've been in your position. Right? Yep. Yeah. Me too, bro. <laughs> me too. Show me something real quick. It's FaceTime, baby. Just show me something. That's the mindset of the brothers. But if a brother really writes it, he's going to say, nah. I'm going to wait. Let's wait, sister. Right. Too many single parents out here, too many single mothers out here striving to do better but can't because she being held down because a Negro won't help her. Right. We sick of that. Right. We come out to the streets. You see what we teach? You ain't heard no, uh, Lord set us free. You ain't heard none of that crap. Right. It's all been straight biblical solutions to help you better yourself, to help y'all better yourselves so you can get the kingdom of God. Go back to Revelation 22, 14 one more time. I'm going to get back. Well, I was just running. That. Come on back, Austin. Come on over, sis. Come on over. We're going to give you a solution. Come on over. I heard you heard that word about these wicked Negroes out here having sex with our sisters, putting babies in them and leaving them. We teaching against that. Sis, smile too. Look, sis right there at the gap. She smile because she know these Negroes out here ain't right. You know why they ain't right? Because their mind ain't right. We're going to show you how to get their minds right. Right. Or how to choose the right man. All my brothers are, hey, if you marry, raise your hand over here. Hold on, look at this. If you marry, got a job and take care of your kids, hold your hand up high. Look at this. You understand? Come on, man. We building a new breed of black man on the planet Earth. It's a new breed of black man on the planet Earth. We living like God now. We changing our lives. And as we change, you sisters got to change. When we get right, y'all got to follow on in. Right? Come on. The book of Revelation chapter 22 and verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments. The Bible says you bless when you do what? The commandment. We read that earlier, but I ain't finished it off. Read. That they may have right to the tree of life. So, sis, God said you bless when you keep the commandment. This your princess right here? Okay, I'll praise to the most high. So, I got three daughters, so I know what you're going through. You got three little girls as well, right? Okay, I'll praise to the most high. So, this is the Bible telling us right here how to be blessed, how to get the kingdom of God. Read. And may enter in through the gates into the city. Because we all want heaven. Everybody say that. If I asked all y'all where y'all want to go when you die, you would say heaven. Right. I'm trying to get heaven. Right. But God tell us how to get it. We got to keep the commandments. We got to stop making bad decisions, sister. That's what we've been going over her this whole time. Right. We make bad decisions. And, and in particular, you sisters make bad decisions. Because you see a brother, you see a brother, he handsome, look like he got something for us, look like he got a little money. And you trust him. Right. You trust him. You say, okay, I'm going to give you my body. I'm going to be with you. And then what ended up happening? 
you get pregnant, you get pregnant by him, and what he do? He dog you out. He don't treat you like he don't treat you like he used to. When he wanted the nookie, he was the best man on earth. When he got it, what he do? He switched up. Because these brothers ain't right out here. We're trying to show you how to get godly men. But the only way to get a godly man, what you gotta become? You gotta become godly. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how we're men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth